You ask whether we are an extension of spirit or just have the ability to tap into it. Ancient Hebrew mysticism speaks of a mysterious term, tikkun olam, the healing of the cosmos, with the idea that out of the unity that began in this supreme light, a great explosion occurred and created us, created living beings, fragments, shards of that one light. So that within all of us there is this light that we need to rediscover and together reunite that oneness of the light. So in that marvelous ancient teaching, there is this idea that we are indeed the light, simply broken away from it and unaware of our origin. In other teachings, we are told that we are a drop in the ocean. But Rumi says, we are the ocean in a drop. The whole point of spiritual awakening is to rediscover our true identity. So buried under the influence of our parents, of our peers, the brainwashing, if you will, of the culture, the illusion of reality presented to us that we must awaken from beyond all the noise and stimulus and media presence that enters our minds and shapes our ideas of men and women, and the purpose of life or the lack thereof. Behind all of that chaos that we are buried in, each one of us must awaken to that deeper life that, that deeper reality in which spirit is entirely present, in which the greatness of the cosmos, the macro of life, is found in the micro, in the tiniest things. The famous saying, as above, so below, at the dawn of humanity, in mystical philosophy is given to us. In esoteric teachings from the beginning, we have this knowledge that we are so much more than we are told that we are. We are so much more than citizens of a country, children of certain parents, our social security number, our jobs, all of these boxes in which we are placed and lose ourselves. The spiritual journey is a return to the source, to the source of our being. So when you ask, can we simply tap into it? The answer is, it is so much more than that. There is a partial truth in tapping into it in the sense that we have to Cleanse the inside of the cup, as Christ says, and you've heard me repeat so many times. We have to realign ourselves. We have to get our house in order internally, psychologically, to become receptive to that reality, that presence. So that is a form of tapping into it. But as we do this, as we break out of our old sense of self, our old ideas of reality, we discover that this new world, this undiscovered country is actually our home, is where we come from, who we are. We are spirit incarnated in matter. We are children of the universe, children of God. And our job is to become conscious of that not merely in saying, I am a child of God, but in becoming that, 
in becoming transparent to the implications that go with that, to the kind of peace, the kind of compassion and mercy and goodness that are reflections of the nature of the Creator Himself. This knowledge of the ultimate mystery is given to us, most especially through the Christ and the revelation of the nature of God. And we can resonate to that. The Creator is not some distant absolute, but Abba, intimately present to us and at the core, unconditional love. How do we know this beyond the revelation? There would be no love if we did not come from love. This is not something that evolves out of the primal soup. There would be no need for beauty if there was not beauty in the soul, in the spirit. Our appreciation of a sunset is part of that witnessing the beauty of creation as visitors, as representatives, ambassadors of that which is beyond creation. But everything around us reduces us to that lowest common denominator. When we listen to music of our youth and the nostalgia that comes with it. Notice how our sense of everything was shaped by these sounds passing on the radio, suggesting that this was the extent and limit of reality until we felt a need to search for something more. And the things that gave us comfort, that gave us a sense of who we were and what life was about fell away like old dead snakeskin, being simply aspects of the culture itself lost from its origins. We have to go off into the silence, into the subculture of a different kind of being and thinking in order to recover these things, because the weight of life around us is so heavy, we are so overwhelmed by all that is around us, that it takes a tremendous yearning to break out of that grave, of that all-consuming noise, that passes itself off as a reality. And when we have done that, when we truly enter the spiritual journey, not to satisfy ego, but to find home, truth, goodness, our essence, then we enter into a very different environment. And the idea in this work is to carry that environment within us, even while still in that tomb of the world around us, in that chaos and noise and flashing lights and madness. You can imagine what it takes, what self-mastery it takes to remain centered and rooted in that consciousness of the deeper reality we have encountered, even in the midst of this cyclone around us of illusion, falsity. All this is to say, yes, of course we are spirit. We come from spirit. We come out of the invisible world. We return to it. And the highest form of religion teaches us that our incarnation in matter is part of that spiritual consciousness, that intensification of our knowing, of our choices, 
that matter is not the enemy, but becomes the helper in finding our way through our own love of the good, love of the holy, our own efforts, our own sweat, tears, and blood. Climbing back up out of that lostness in which we find ourselves in this realm of humanity. And then as we achieve that understanding, that wisdom, that being, before we leave this earth, we can share it in some way, even by our very presence without a word, and leave a trace of it behind so that others can find their way home.